CDL practice test, New York, combination vehicles, part 1. Question number 1. What are trailer air tanks used for? A. To keep oil and water out of the service and emergency airlines. B. To indicate how much air pressure is used on the trailer brakes. C. To add more air to tires. D. To supply air pressure to the trailer brakes. The correct answer is here. D. To supply air pressure to the trailer brakes. Explanation. Trailer air tanks are used to supply air pressure to trailer brakes through relay valves. Question number 2. What might happen if the trailer is too high when you try to couple the trailer may start rolling? A. You will not be able to connect the airlines. B. You will not be able to connect the electrical cord. C. The trailer may not couple correctly. The correct answer is here. C. The trailer may not couple correctly. Explanation. The trailer should be low enough that it is raised slightly by the tractor when the tractor is backed under it. Raise or lower the trailer as needed. If the trailer is too low, the tractor may strike and damage the trailer nose. If the trailer is too high, it may not couple correctly. Question number 3. When coupling a tractor semi-trailer, to test the trailer air brakes, you should place the tractor protection valve control in what position? A. Down. B. Up. C. Normal. The correct answer is here. C. Normal. Explanation. To test the trailer air brake system, first charge it with air, push in the red trailer air supply knob, or place the tractor protection valve control in the normal position. Wait until the air pressure reaches normal before you start your tests. Question number 4. The fifth wheel locking lever is not locked after the jaws close around the kingpin. This means that, A. The trailer will not swivel on the fifth wheel. B. The parking lock is off and you may drive away. C. The coupling is not right and should be fixed before you drive the coupled unit. The correct answer is here. C. The coupling is not right and should be fixed before you drive the coupled unit. Explanation. Don't drive the vehicle until you're sure that the coupling is correct. Check to make sure of the following. There is no space between the upper and lower fifth wheel. The fifth wheel jaws have closed around the shank of the kingpin. The locking lever is in the lock position. And the safety latch is in position over the locking lever. If anything isn't right, don't drive the vehicle until you've found and corrected the problem. If you drive it anyway, your trailer could come loose while you're driving. Question number 5. You are coupling a tractor to a semi-trailer. You have connected the airlines before backing under the trailer. You should. A. Pull ahead to test the glad hands connections. B. Make sure that the trailer brakes are off. C. Supply air to the trailer system and then pull out the air supply knob to lock the trailer brakes. The correct answer is here. C. Supply air to the trailer system and then pull out the air supply knob to lock the trailer brakes. Explanation. Before backing under the trailer, check that the trailer brakes are working and then lock the trailer brakes. Once you've attached the airlines, there are a number of checks you should make. Check the glad hand seals. Make sure that the airlines won't be caught or crushed when you back under the trailer. Charge the trailer air brake system and verify that it's working without significant air loss. 
then set the trailer air supply control to shut off the air and put on the trailer emergency brakes. Question number 6. What is the emergency airline? A. Airlines that control the emergency brakes of the tractor. B. Airlines connecting the parking brake to the trailer brakes. C. Airlines that control the emergency brakes on combination vehicles. The correct answer is here. C. Airlines that control the emergency brakes on combination vehicles. Explanation. The emergency airline is often colored red. It supplies air to the trailer air tanks and controls the trailer's emergency brakes. Question number 7. What does the tractor protection valve do? A. It protects the truck tractor from skidding. B. The tractor protection valve is another name for trailer emergency brakes, which let air out of the tractor emergency line. C. It keeps air out of the truck tractor. D. It shuts down the air supply to the trailer if there is a leak. The correct answer is here. D. It shuts down the air supply to the trailer if there is a leak. Explanation. The trailer protection valve cuts off the air supply to the trailer. In case the trailer breaks free or there is a massive air leak in the trailer. Question number 8. Which type of truck trailer combination has the greatest chance of a crack the whip rollover? A. A tractor pulling two trailers. B. A single tractor trailer. C. A tractor pulling three trailers. The correct answer is here. C. A tractor pulling three trailers. Explanation. The last trailer of a triple is 3.5 times more likely to roll over than a five axle tractor. This is known as the crack the whip effect. When pulling a triple, increase your following distance, avoid sudden moves, and steer gently. At night, don't drive faster than your headlight range. Question number 9. How do you avoid off-tracking? A. Drive at a slow and steady pace with little variation. B. Keep the front of your vehicle away from the curb and go toward the left lane. C. Steer and follow the curve of the curb closely when you make turns. D. Steer wide enough at turns to avoid hitting curbs, pedestrians, etc. with your rear trailer. The correct answer is here. D. Steer wide enough at turns to avoid hitting curbs, pedestrians, etc. with your rear trailer. Explanation. Since the rear trailer has the highest risk of off-tracking, you should steer wide when you make turns to avoid hitting pedestrians, curbs, etc. with the rear trailer. Question number 10. The air leakage rate for a combination vehicle, engine off, brakes on, should not be more than C per minute. A. 2. B. 3. C. 4. The correct answer is here. C. 4. Explanation. With a fully charged air system, turn off the engine, release the parking brake, and time the air pressure drop. The loss rate should be less than 3C in 1 minute for combination vehicles, adding 1 second if the brakes are applied. Question number 11. What are the other names for the service airline? A. Curb line and signal line. B. Straight line and control line. C. Control line and signal line.
the correct answers here, C. Control line and signal line. Explanation. The service airline is also known as the control line or signal line. Question number 12. If the brakes did not release when you push the trailer air supply valve, you should A. Check the airline connections. B. Check the electrical cables. C. Cross the airlines. The correct answer is here. A. Check the airline connections. Explanation. If you cross the emergency in service airlines, air will flow to the service line instead of the trailer air tanks. Air won't be available to release the spring brakes. Therefore, if the spring brakes don't release when you push the trailer air supply control, check the airline connections. Question number 13. Low slung vehicles can be risky at railroad crossings because A. They are more likely to jackknife on the uneven ground. B. They may take longer to stop. C. They are more likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings. The correct answer is here. C. They are more likely to get stuck on raised railroad crossings. Explanation. The two types of combination vehicles most likely to get stuck at a raised railroad crossing are low slung units, car carriers, low boys, moving vans, etc. and single axle tractors that are pulling a long trailer with its landing gear set to accommodate a tandem axle tractor be very careful when driving such vehicles at railroad crossings.